Okay. All right, let's get started. Another day, another stream um, with implementing a transformer from scratch in Rust. Uh, today is going to be the quickest possible one, I think, because we're going to be talking about layer normalization. More specifically, we're going to be talking about this particular block. Um, so in the previous uh, two streams, we were able to basically, you know, take a sentence, something in English, convert that to what is called an input embedding, which is just a sequence of vectors. And then we also try to add positional information, you know, for each of those words. And uh, what happens after that is that's the input that goes into the encoder. Uh, so if you see here correctly, you see that three copies of that go to something called multi-head attention, which is the most important block. That's where you're, you know, you're actually doing some sort of attention scoring. We'll get to that. But then there's also another copy that goes to this layer called add and norm. Well, the normalization layer is pretty straightforward. Let's actually look at it. Uh, what is normalization layer? So, by the way, these slides, I think I've already mentioned this, but just to say this, this is from a person called Umar Jamil. I hope I pronounced that right. So he's got his own stream. He's implemented all of this from scratch in Python. A very, very good tutorial. I'd say all we're doing is, you know, we're taking most of what he's done and trying to see how we can uh, implement this in Rust using the Candle ML framework. For obvious reasons, Python has limitations, Rust has benefits when it comes to deployment, things like inferencing at scale with, you know, with what is called not using a lot of resources, etc. Additionally, you also you know, get to really interface with GPUs very easily. So we'll talk about all those as we go along this series. But yeah, so this, I'd highly recommend this, this tutorial. It's a lengthy one, you can sort of break it down. But anyway, and these are his slides. So if you take a look at normalization, the very basic thing is, let's say you've got a bunch of vectors or matrices or whatever it is, you calculate the mean of each, uh, uh, of each vector or matrix or whatever it is, separately, individually, all right? And then you subtract the mean for, let's say this is item one, so this is, assume this is a vector. You subtract from each element, you subtract its mean, and then you also take the standard deviation, you add a small quantity called epsilon, and then you take the square root of it, all right? And that's your new value. Effectively, what you're trying to do is I've put some notes over here. So what you're trying to do with layer normalization is with many, many layers, the outputs of neurons can grow pretty large or small. And this can get really, uh, this can make things really difficult because computers, obviously we have limited space and memory that is, we can't have infinite precision for smaller numbers or larger numbers, etc. So we sort of need to find uh, a way to deal with this. So what we use is we use this thing called normalization. We take a large, we take uh, a distribution that's, you know, that's larger, you know, not larger, but we take a distribution that's from, let's say, I don't know, maybe zero to thousands or whatever it is. And we try and, you know, uh, sort of map that distribution between zero and one. So that becomes a little, lot more easier and a lot more predictable. Uh, and we do that by calculating the mean and the standard deviation. So there's like two versions of this, which you also see in the slide. We, one is layer normalization, which is what we are talking about. There's also batch normalization. It's just a, you know, a subtle difference, but effectively that's what you do. You know, you subtract the mean, you divide that by the standard deviation. And then you sort of get all your values within the zero to one bound, zero to one distribution. All right. Now, I'll get to the how it's implemented in Candle. But uh, before we do that, let's actually also take a look at this uh, slide. Uh, so apart from this calculation, 
apart from the mean and the average uh, and the standard deviation, and then you know being able to remap or distribute that within the zero to one, I could say range. I think yeah. You also have two more parameters called. I guess this slide is calling it gamma and beta. Apparently, they called other things as well, but effectively, both of them are again tensors. One is multiplied. The other one is added. So it's like a weight and a bias. All right. The idea of introducing these two at the layer normalization stage is you now have the ability to amplify stuff or features that you want or not or you know reduce the influence of a feature by de-amplifying it. Okay. So these uh, two things are called gamma and beta over here, but these are learnable parameters and these help you sort of you could say a little bit of fine tuning is possible. And I talked about layer normalization, which is, you know, you take each component and then you do the mean and the variance, which is the standard deviation, or you could actually take a batch and then each feature of a layer in a batch, you take all the features in that batch for all the layers, and then you can do the same thing, take the mean and the uh, standard deviation. So it's just a little, a slightly different way of doing the same thing, but this makes sense. So this is layer normalization. It's the most simplest block in, you know, in the encoder. It's pretty straightforward. The idea is you're trying to like, you know, remap a distribution to another distribution, just so that, you know, it's easier for us to work with um, the, you know, the large set of numbers or really small numbers that you can get. Imagine if you were trying to like, you know, you got like a number that's 0, 0.00 or something, that's going to be a divide by zero in some cases. You don't want that. That's why we add things like the epsilon, et cetera, over here. Anyway, that's layer normalization, but our intent, our interest is not the layer itself. It's mostly to do with how does candle do this. So let's take a look at that. So the way this works is I simply go ahead and have, uh, what is a simple struct, which is a tuple struct. It is holding one thing called layer norm. So I am just simply wrapping what already exists. So layer norm is basically this. This is where, this is the thing that you you need to go ahead and perform layer normalization. So I don't need to do much, it's already implemented. The weights and the bias can be thought of as the gamma and the whatever that other term was, gamma and beta, yeah. And then you can also not, use the mean thing that's that's something that i'm yet to figure out but yeah that's also something else and then the epsilon piece so i'm just creating my own wrapper around this layer now and i go ahead and create according to the paper uh you the gamma and the beta you want to start off with zeros and ones so i'm just using the same thing over here and i create uh the layer normalization here so the, the most helpful thing about the layer norm implementation in Candle is that it's got a standalone function, which is very cool, which effectively you can just call forward on it. I'll, I'll go ahead and show you this, but you can create your own layer norm and that's it, you have it. The thing that I wanted to also talk about was the actual performing of the layer normalization. So you get the tensor in and you now want to normalize that tensor. All I do is I just go ahead and call the inner forward method. So if you go to the inner forward method, you'll see that pretty much the entire calculation that you see here, which is calculating the mean and calculating the standard deviation, all of that's right here. So there's a little bit of type checking that's done just so that, you know, because this is us, we want to use all that. Uh, and then based on whether or not remove mean exists, we go ahead and calculate the mean exactly what, what happens over here. Once the mean is calculated, uh, we subtract the values in the, uh, you know, in the input tensor, and we go ahead and then normalize it. This is the normalization part. And the, normal, the fully normalized version is divided. So the broadcast divide is also done, and you're done. And then, now, I, also, I mentioned that you know you might want to go ahead and multiply the you know the gamma and add the beta 
that's sort of what you're doing over here, okay? So you can either multiply the gamma here, which is the weight, or you can add the beta here, which is the bias. So these two parameters you can sort of, I guess you can use. I haven't used them. I'm still working through the model. So is when you get down to really fine tuning the model, I guess these two things will be very useful, right? So that's a very nice way of looking at things and doing things. Yeah, and there's also a nice little helper function over here where you don't have to do a lot. So if you've got, uh, if you want to create a layer norm and not use, you know, the new method like like we're doing over here, like we're doing here, and you actually want to, you actually have got the layer norm already, the weights and the bias, you can go ahead and pull them uh, using this helper method over here. So you provide the config and then you're done. All right, uh, this is root meet squared. Uh, normalization. This is just a variation of layer now. That's what I have learned. We'll get to it, but it's not part of the paper, so I'm not using it. But I hope that makes sense, right? So this particular struct is just a wrapper around everything that's provided by candle. So that's cool. And I pretty much don't have an example, so that's fine because you won't. It won't make a lot of sense to even show something. Uh, because it'll just be numbers. So I don't have the test, I'll probably write it later. But yeah, that's layer normalization. Uh, and that's how it's implemented. You can implement this with something like candle. All right, so now let me just cover this. After this, we're gonna be talking about the other layers, which is really coming to the actual part, which is multi-head attention. Uh, so let's actually get to the multi-head attention part. Yeah, so this part, the multi-head attention part, we get to that part and things become interesting because we'll start to look at things like affinity scores or what is called attention scores. So each word with each words, how they're related. And the way, it's a very simple formula. You can think of this as Q times the transpose of KT. So Q and K and all of these are just, you know, whatever encoder input you had, you saw, where is that? You saw that these three lines over here. So when you add these two up, you've got one, two, three. These are three copies of just whatever is the encoder input. So Q, K, and V are basically that. And then we get these numbers. Uh, don't worry, these numbers are all random, as you mentioned. This is just so that you know we get the picture. But anyway, so we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about this, which is the most interesting piece. Uh, we may also talk about the feed forward layer before this. Yeah, just to make things simpler so that you know. We'll figure it out, whether we go for multi-head or feed forward, because I've got both implemented anyway. All right, so that's the add and norm layer implemented in Rust using the candle framework. Yeah, so I guess that's it. Have a good day.